Scarlett Johansson is currently in a war with the AI overlords to take her voice back because they have stolen her voice for ChatGPT. Now, this is interesting. She released a statement basically telling the world that ChatGPT stole her voice because she didn't give the per them permission to use it in their new uh, AI voice, Sky. So here was her statement as follows. Last September, I received an offer from Sam Altman who wanted to hire me to voice the current chat GPT 4.0 system. He told me that he felt, this is really creepy. He felt that by my voicing the system, I could bridge the gap between tech companies and creatives and help consumers feel comfortable with the seismic shift concerning humans and AI. He said he felt that my voice would be comforting to people. Now, mind you, Scarlett Johansson's voice starred in the movie Her. Sam Altman is obsessed with this movie. Is he? He is obsessed with this movie. Okay. And he even tweeted out the, just the word Her the other day when they did the launch live stream for this, this voice actor. I mean, I would think they'd hire like a Morgan Freeman if you want to make people feel more comfortable with... Well, isn't it ironic that in the effort to make people more comfortable with AI becoming a part of their lives, he uses the movie Her as a reference point in which a lonely man forms an intimate relationship with an AI robot yeah. voice. How is that supposed to be comforting for us? It's Whatever. funny too, no, because the, the voice is actually a really important. So in the show, Person of Interest, the, the character of the machine never has a voice of its own. It's electronically created until the final like three episodes and it takes on the voice of like a character a very important character that dies okay and it it uses her voice as its avatar from then on so that actually becomes an important <laughs> part of the plot where the character basically says like uh to harold like you never gave me a name you never you know you never allowed me to grow and and evolve and he says i didn't give you a voice because i didn't want to identify with you, you know, in a humane way. Well, that's really the goal mm -hmm. behind giving an AI a voice anyway, mm -hmm. is to make you feel like you have some kind of rapport with it, some kind of relationship with it, and divorce you from the idea that it really is just a robot. Yeah. And ironically, they usually choose female voices for these things, like Siri, like Cortana, all of these AI voices, they're female because it's more inviting. Um, there's, there's an interesting psychology behind it, but after much consideration and for personal reasons, I declined the offer. Nine months later, my friends, family, and the general public all noted how much the newest system named Sky sounded like me. When I heard the release demo, I was shocked, angered, and in disbelief that Mr. Altman would pursue a voice that sounded so eerily similar to mine that my closest friends and news outlets could not tell the difference. Mr. Allman even insinuated that the similarity was intentional, tweeting a single word, her, a reference to the film in which I voiced a chat system, Samantha, who forms an intimate relationship with a human. Two days before the chat GPT 4.0 demo was released, Mr. Altman contacted my agent asking me to reconsider. Before we could connect, the system was out there. As a result of their actions, I was forced to hire legal counsel who wrote two letters to Mr. Altman and OpenAI setting out what they had done and asking them to detail the exact process by which they created the Sky Voice. Consequently, OpenAI reluctantly agreed to take down the Sky Voice. Okay. In a time when we are all grappling with deep fakes and the protection of our own likeness, our own work, our own identities, I believe these are questions that deserve absolute clarity. I look forward to resolution in the form of transparency in the passage of appropriate legislation to help ensure that individual rights are protected. She and what followed. Dealt, she has dealt more with with more AI deepfake stuff than almost any celebrity. Like Yeah, there was the very, others. very viral video of her. Early days of that stuff. She was already dealing with a lot of these issues. Jessica mm -hmm. Vaughn tweeted something really interesting, basically like, this is going to be an issue. Like, imagine you're somebody who doesn't, have so much of a platform that you can protect your own likeness or you don't have the financial means to pay a legal team to exactly. go and threaten these companies that are trying to steal individual identities yeah. granted it only happened to her because she's famous and because this movie is very well known but um 
it, it was predictive programming because now it's, it's really happening. But in response, uh, Sam Altman decided to put out a statement to clarify that they didn't mean for the voice to sound like Scarlett Johansson at all. Oh my goodness, what a coincidence. Yes, they said, uh, we believe that AI voices should not deliberately mimic a celebrity's distinctive voice. Sky's voice is not an imitation of Scarlett Johansson, but belongs to a different professional actress using her own natural speaking voice. To protect protect their privacy, we cannot share the names of our voice talents. Let's Somebody look at the video. Scarlett though. Johnson. Pull up the video, and you guys can hear for yourself the comparison between Sky and Scarlett Johansson in her. Oh, right when you asked me if I. When did you give it to yourself? Well, right when you asked me if I had a name, I thought, yeah, he's right. I do need a name, but I wanted to pick a good one. So I read a book called How to Name Your Baby, and out of 180,000 names, that's the one I like. Ooh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Bite was a curious robot. I mean, it's there. The it's... similarity is definitely noticeable. It's not dead on what's weird there. is if is he didn't they... make comments that called it into question you of could course. say like if he had no previous desire to work with scarlett johansson then perhaps it wouldn't be so noticeable right exactly and um they noted here that the open ai ceo sam altman was seemingly already aware of the similarities posting the single word message her on on his ex account and he previously said that the movie her uh is his favorite movie and I saw an interesting theory that although Sam Altman publicly identifies as a gay man, he might feel feelings uh, for Scarlett Johansson. He might feel jilted by her rejection. Yeah. And he wanted to get revenge on her by stealing her voice and using it for Sky. And he thought he was going to get away with it. <laughs> but well, they said it... this is because Silicon Valley is majority male. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he kind of just became gay as a survival mechanism. If, if I didn't know that he had a previous fascination with the movie and had asked her to do this, I probably wouldn't even think about it or even notice. I, I don't think it's the most similar. Like, it's not as close as I expected it to be. Well, but we've only just, heard like 10 seconds. Just but... the fact that he had this conversation with her prior at least makes you understand where her desire for litigation came from. Sure. And they pulled it, so clearly they didn't want to fight it because they didn't want to reveal how they, you know, taught it. They might have used yeah. her voice as just one of the inputs for it, for yeah. sure. And, um, you know, it's interesting. It, it's quite ironic that the self-professed like benevolent ai overlord who acts like you know what sam altman is a quirk chungus look okay his his bio on x for for just an mm. example is ai is cool i guess very quirky stop okay so the benevolent ai overlords who want us to feel more um, intimately close with AI mm -hmm. uh, using a female voice like this that mm -hmm. is familiar from a celebrity to make us feel this, this fake uh, camaraderie with AI. Um, they, they use a movie like her as a reference point. The fact that they use that as a reference point says a lot. It says everything you need to know because her is a dystopian movie. Yeah. It's supposed to be disturbing that this lonely human formed an intimate, romantic, quote unquote, relationship with a robot um, because he had just delusionally fell for that, that fake feeling of intimacy. Mm. That's supposed to be a dystopian story, not what you actually try to foment in the real world and sell as a product. Yeah. Like, in what... Like, how could you possibly think that would make people trust you? I mean, I think they think of themselves as higher beings in a way, that they think of themselves as above and beyond the intelligence of the average person. Therefore, they know what's best for society. And all of these Silicon Valley people, they're obsessed with effective altruism too. Mm -hmm. Like coming up with all of these weird ethical dilemmas that aren't ethical dilemmas at all, only because they think they are gods. Mm -hmm. And well, they think that they example? do deserve the authority. Well, it's just, um, it's like the trolley problem, mm -hmm. 
but expand it into all different facets of human life, like especially questions of sexuality. I think one like viral question from the effective altruists is a, a man buys a chicken carcass and brings it home, has sex with it, and then discards of it. Is what he did unethical? Okay. <laughs> that is a type, the type of question that an effective altruist would ask you okay. to make you think about the ethical dilemma. If you have a real moral paradigm that is derived from religious authority, then it doesn't make you question yourself at all. Mm -hmm. But to them, that's like that's their whole worldview is like creating these stupid trolley problems about what when when or where it's okay to jerk off mm -hmm. they're a bunch of weirdo f like freak perverts i do not trust them and i never will and we actually have someone who comments on the channel quite frequently about ai mm -hmm. he's very critical of ai and i understand it but a lot of the comments that we see they're quite black pilling like ai is going to destroy the world mm -hmm. I don't really know if it will, but um, at the very least, I'm gonna be skeptical of these people who are selling it as a product. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.